Welcome to a short tutorial on system requirement specification document from Adaptive Processes. I am Ellen, Principal Consultant and RE Evangelist at Adaptive Processes. Before we begin uh, the topic discussion, just a minute intro on Adaptive. Adaptive is uh, world's first integrated requirements engineering solutions organization. Uh, we provide products, consulting and training in requirements engineering. Uh, we have got substantial experience of close to 100 plus years of consulting experience, uh, got 200 plus clients across the globe and we would have conducted more than 200 RE workshops in India, US, Thailand, Philippines and many other countries. Uh, among our partners uh, include uh, International Institute of Business Analysis Canada, International Requirements Engineering Board USA, Open Requirements Engineering Foundation USA, Scrum Study USA and My IT Study USA. We are also awarded with Red Herring Asia Top 100 Award for 2014 and Deloitte Technology First 50 for 2013. We are an ISO 9001 certified company and a member of NASCOM, the leading uh, software services association in India. Now let me uh, narrate a small story uh, before I uh, go ahead with the topic presentation. Uh, so once I was uh, consulting a client and uh, uh, they got the product delivered to them by the client, uh, by their vendor. And they found about 600 defects in the product. So this product was being developed for about eight or nine months. Too many defects came up. And it was really surprising that so many defects came up. And when they started analyzing these defects, many of these defects were actually very small defects. So for example, something should be left aligned. It was not left aligned. Uh, some double scrolls came. Uh, the lookups were not ordered properly and there were a lot of discontent um, or dispute between the vendor and the supplier or vendor and the customer. And then I recognized the fact that uh, there is a saying in English which says devil is in details. Uh, but what I understood or what I realized is that actually for a business analyst, God lies in details. Because business analysts do not provide a clear instruction to developers as to how things should be done, the developers interpret it in the way they think right and obviously the customer and developers are disconnected and the business analysts have not done a good job of providing a very clear specification to developers. This is an attempt uh, by us to provide you a good template we ourselves develop our own product and we have used this template in our own product development methodology and found fantastic value. This template also has been adopted by many of our clients where we do requirements engineering consulting. Of course, we'd be happy to receive feedbacks and improve this template as we go forward. The requirements document uh, we have structured into two categories. So one, we call it as business requirement specification document for which I have created another video and that's also available in our channel. This document is more about describing a particular feature in great detail. So here I'm going to describe the requirements management module of GRC Perfect. Uh, GRC Perfect is the governance risk and compliance management system from adaptive processes. So now let's get going. Of course, as I said in BRS document as well, we could do it in Word or Excel. Uh, we prefer Excel because it's a lot more compact. A lot more features are available in Excel in terms of grouping, filtering, um, uh, tabbing. So that's why we prefer Excel compared to Word. But you are free to choose any template that you like. Our recommendation would always be Excel. So as we look at the template, uh, the first uh, thing that we see is a cover page document which is very standard in all our documentation which says how the document has been created and how it is being improved upon. Then we have our index page where we provide link from one uh, page to all pages. So for example, I can go to implicit requirements or flowchart by just clicking on this and I can come back. So this way it helps in very quick navigation 
between any module that you are more interested to understand. Then we come to a small module which is called module objectives and scope and out of scope. So we very clearly tell what this module is trying to achieve and what is out of scope for the module. So for example here the main module is to manage requirements from ideation to retirement, provision for estimation, maintain traceability, maintain documentation and interface with a requirements modeling tool. Whereas development of requirements modeling tool is not in scope of this particular module or system. Then we come to our context diagram which gives you an idea about the entire scope of things that we expect this module to do. So as you see the requirements can be, uh, let me just reduce this little bit. Requirements can be created manually through email, through Excel or searching previous requirements. And then once the requirement is created, you can estimate it using function point, use case point, story point or WBS. It of course goes for an approval. Once it is approved, you can always create a schedule for that. And you also can create test cases for the requirements. You can also create issues for requirements. And once the requirement is created, it automatically gets into the requirements database for further use. And also, of course, there is a executive dashboard module which does reporting on requirement status. Then we come to NFR. As you may see, uh, this NFR also was covered in our uh, business requirement specification document. But here, it's always possible that for a particular feature or module, you may have specific requirements. So for example, I have taken very few requirements where we needed a specific thing. So for example, on performance, because we are importing a lot of requirements, so we create a separate require performance requirement saying 1000 records should be imported within two minutes. So we should be able to import 1000 records within two minutes. Similarly, there is a specific requirement saying requirements database should be restricted to non-sensitive projects. That means if you have sensitive projects, those requirements should not appear in the requirements library. Uh, similarly, we also said it's a specific thing that from a usability perspective, we would like requirements to be created through email as well. But for all product modules, we may not expect it to happen. Then we come to use case diagram, so which I think you can uh, see this has been created using star UML and mostly the project manager is responsible for creating the backlog, importing the backlog, updating the backlog, adding it to schedule. The team member can always view and export uh, uh, requirements. Then we come to implicit requirements. Uh, so if you remember in BRS also we talked of an implicit requirement but here the implicit requirement is more at a feature level like say for example is there a uniqueness requirements of data of course yes and it is WBS ID. Uh, do you expect an ordering of data any kind of summarization field level application security if it is needed. Um, So is there some escalation needed, audit trail needed? So these are things that we should think at a module level or a requirement level than thinking at a product level. So this UI implicit requirements are mostly for the module. Then we come to flowchart where how the whole um, uh, flowchart works. So you have a product owner, you have project manager, you have the system, you have the developer, how they work in the whole process is described here. Then we come to functional requirements where all the requirements that is being implemented in this system or module has been expect, explained. Mm, so the column headings are like whether it is in scope, what is the rank of the requirement, what is the size and story points because we follow agile methodology so we have put story points, whether the requirement has a very high criticality, is it stable, whether it is accepted and to whom is it assigned to, what is the implementation status who is the user contact, what is the benefit of the requirement and the value index. The value index basically uh, is a calculation using benefit and the size. And then what is, the, what is the proposed milestone for the requirement and what is the actual milestone for the requirement. So this is where we describe all the features of the product. Then we come to summary user interface, so which is basically a HTML prototype of 
how the system should look like. Then we also have a detailed um, view which is more on um, how the page looks like when you get to see the details. Then we come to the business rules. So these are the rules that we would like to be implemented when the system is being followed. So for example, a requirement can be added to schedule only if acceptance status is approved. Unless a requirement is approved, we don't want to take it to schedule. And similarly, while adding a requirement to schedule, only milestones which are in progress or open can be chosen because a closed milestone cannot be, a requirement should not be assigned to a closed milestone. Then comes matrix model. So what we have done is we have taken the UI elements and we have described it in great detail uh, for uh, the value and parameters for each control. Uh, there is in fact a very specific video created by me on uh, matrix model would request you to go through that as well uh, because this is one of the fantastic things that we have done and we have seen fabulous results uh, by implementing this particular template because it gives excellent clarity to a developer as to what should be done and what should not be done. Then we come to state chart diagram, which basically tells you what are the states for our requirements and how they are going through. So this is an implementation status state chart diagram. And then we of course put the same thing in an Excel because sometimes developers find it easy. And we also may like to develop uh, some kind of a rule for movement so if you see here i'm writing uh, what is my current state and what is my new state and how the movements are permitted uh, to move is there a rule that you would like to follow that is described in the state transition matrix then we have a review module uh, which is basically to review the requirements document as you see so who are the people who got uh, presented there so what are the comments they made all that is captured here and during the review of course we used a checklist which allows us to look through all aspects whether everything is done correctly or not and then we have a problem tracker which is mainly related to so all the aspects which are still not um, agreed upon uh, has been put here so for example uh, integration with requirements modeling tool which modeling tool to talk to uh, that is still not decided that's why we have put it here similarly we would like to have an integration with ms word for import purpose that is also not yet worked out so that's why we have put it under discussion point and then of course you would have a um, traceability matrix indicating uh, this requirement what are the related requirements what is the high level design document and all so if you see here, this is a very vital module because it has linkages to schedule, SUs, test cases, requirement summary, requirements trend report, daily status report, weekly status report, monthly status report, and as well as requirements library. So these are all the modules for which this module has a linkage. So that is what has been mentioned here. So what are the implementation reports and modules and testing and usually we would create another test case document which would describe all the testing aspects for this particular requirement. I hope you uh, like this small tutorial and you can see many more tutorials in our channel in YouTube. So go to YouTube and look for adaptive processes. Uh, this template is also uh, available for purchase. If you would like to purchase the template, uh, please visit our website adaptiveprocesses.com you can also send an email to us as info at adaptiveprocesses.com thank you so much and hope we interact uh, sometime in near future bye bye